Okay, thank you. Here we go again. <laughs> uh, the last time I was up here, my, my aunt in a small town in the Ozarks was dying. And she died the next morning. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm part of the establishment of a small town. I guess that's why it's lucky me, or maybe not. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I get a little inheritance, but what's amazing is I get to interact with these amazing people. And uh, that's why I call it Ozark Wobegon, because it is very much like Lake Wobegon. And there's nothing all that unusual about it. William Leesteet Moon discovered that there is a story behind every small town. And he wrote, he wrote a book called Prairie Earth, where he more or less at random picked a small, insignificant town in the middle of Kansas and told amazing stories that came out of the history of this town. And the, the, the same is true of Donovan, Missouri. Uh, they, um, it's a town of about 2,000 people. My uncle died three years ago when 1,000 people came to his visitation, which for a town of 2,000 isn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> and around the time my aunt died, like four people died all at once. There was a big ch scheduling conflict, and they had to have her funeral right after church, so only 500 showed up. Uh, but what, what really impressed me was the p procession to the cemetery. Um, had a highway patrol car lead us to the edge of town, and then he blocked traffic on the highway so we could pass. That didn't impress me so much. I'd seen that many times before. But when we had this short trip down the highway to the cemetery, people coming along the procession didn't just slow down, didn't just pull over, they parked and let us pass. And um, so I, you know, I, I was beginning to get really impressed with these people. And now, um, now we got to liquidate the estate, something I wish on no one. Um, but our banker is the head of, of one of the banks in town. Um, his son is an attorney, and he's told us his son, don't charge them anything for your services, but you're taking care of their estate. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, 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 I'm really in, impressed with that. Um, and at the... Uh, at the same time, I'm, I'm mourning for the lost because they're really special people. And uh, I'd like to tell a couple of stories about them. My, my aunt was, was petite, graceful. She taught piano. And she came out of school one day, and there were a bunch of girls playing jump rope. They're playing double dutch, if you know what double dutch is, the two ropes. He said, can you... Mrs. Tabs, can, can, can you jump rope with us? And she said, sure, I'll do that. Do you do double dutch? Yes, I'll do double dutch. So they started going with the double dutch. And she said, do you do hot peppers? And she said, I think I can do that. And so they did hot peppers. And imagine any of your elementary school teachers doing double dutch hot peppers. <laughs> I was... I, I was I was truly amazed to hear that story. It was um, a after my uncle passed away. My my aunt hated to cook, and so we'd always go out to eat, and couldn't go anywhere. It was like going out to eat with a celebrity. You couldn't go, couldn't go anywhere without one of our former students coming up to to talk to us. And uh, there there was one day. She had a hair appointment, and then she went, had gone to the store 
just to get a gallon of milk and wanted to get the milk in the refrigerator before she went to her hair appointment. And one of her students came up and blah, 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 oh, Ms. Arveda, blah, 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 it's so nice to see you, blah, blah, blah. and he would not shut up. <laughs> and she got back to her house just to put the milk in the refrigerator, and there was a police car sitting in her driveway. And she said, what are you doing here? <laughs> he said, well, your hairdresser was concerned because you were 10 minutes late. <laughs> But I want you to know that from my office to here is 10 minutes without breaking the speed limit. I know, because I timed it. So I'm ready whenever you want me. <laughs> then uh, my, my uncle was a leader in the community. He did a lot of things. Um, but my favorite thing that he did was the day he was judging a turkey contest. <laughs> you, know, you know, hunting is big deal. Hunting is serious business in the Ozarks. It, it's, a, it, it's a great tradition. So they had a contest during turkey season for the largest turkey. And this scrawny teenage boy, who shall remain nameless because now he's a prominent citizen, <laughs> A scrawny teenage boy comes up with a scrawny juvenile turkey. They, they're calling them Jake's. And so you can imagine a half-grown skinny turkey and he laid it on the scale, 22 pounds. My uncle looked at the turkey, realized that 22 pounds is a butterball, it's not a Jake, you know? <laughs> Looked at the turkey, looked at the scale, looked at the kid, and said, what did you do? <laughs> and the kid said, well, well, Mr. Caps, uh, you know window weights? <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's two window weights inside that turkey. <laughs> and how did you get the window weights in the turkey? Well, sir, um, there, there's a, a, I'm sure you know, there's a front way <laughs> and a back way. And I found that the back way is much easier. <laughs> well, that was it for that turkey contest. <laughs> Thank you, it's been great. <laughs>